Number 10. Frank Singleton Things were looking up for Frank Singleton, 21, as he was released from jail. However, when he realized that he didn't have a ride home, he walked straight into the prison parking lot and approached a woman who was driving a manual transmission Nissan 350Z. He pushed the vehicle's driver out of the way, grabbed the keys, and jumped into the car. He didn't get far, however. The vehicle had a manual transmission that Singleton was unable to operate. Officers nearby heard the noise and ran out to see what was happening. They re-arrested Singleton and charged him with carjacking. Singleton told authorities that he didn't feel like walking. Number 9. Kristen Bala Polish author Kristen Bala, 34, might have gotten away with murder if he hadn't written about it in his book. For a number of years, Polish police had failed to solve the murder until a detective found some physical clues linking the murder to Bala. More sensationally, clues to the killing were found in Bala's first novel, Amok, published in 2003, several years after the murder. The similarities led the police to investigate further, discovering connections between Bala and the victim, including the fact that the victim was romantically involved with Bala's ex-wife. In 2007, Bala was sentenced to jail for 25 years for planning and committing the murder of a Polish small business owner. Bala is working on a second novel, tentatively titled Delirk. Police reported evidence found on his computer of plans for killing a new victim to tie in with his second novel. Number 8. Klaus Schmidt In August 1995, Klaus Schmidt tried to rob a bank in Berlin, Germany by walking in with a pistol and demanding money. However, as the robbery progressed, the bank employees noticed that the criminal was acting rather strangely. At one point, one of them asked the robber if he needed a bag, and he replied, You're damn right it's a real gun! This made them realize that Schmidt had a noticeable handicap. He was deaf. Taking advantage, one employee set off the alarm. Schmidt remained oblivious. Even while the deafening alarm was sounding and the police approached the bank, the robber remained calm and patient, occasionally spouting threats. When the police arrived, they quickly took the criminal into custody. However, Schmidt found a way to turn a negative into a positive. He tried to sue the bank for exploiting his disability. Number 7. Ruben Zarat In 2008, 18-year-old Ruben Zarat entered a muffler shop in Chicago armed with a gun and demanding money. But there was a problem. Most of the money was in the safe. Only the manager could open it, and the manager wasn't in. To save himself some time, Ruben gave his number to the cashier to let him know when the manager arrives. However, the employees called Chicago police first. The police told the employees to call the robber. Ruben returned to find the cops waiting for him. They engaged in a shootout, after which Ruben was arrested. Number 6. Zachary Tentoni During the mugging in a park in Boston, a man grabbed the woman's wallet containing $40. While fleeing from the scene, the clumsy mugger dropped two bags in which he was carrying his belongings, including clothing, hygiene products, and a pair of sneakers. At the top of his bag was his birth certificate, which identified him as Zachary Tentoni, born in 1987, and a letter to him sent by his mother. Tentoni was found by officers several hours later, just one street away from where the woman was mugged. The 26-year-old allegedly lied to police during questioning by giving them a false name, but was later identified by the woman and charged with unarmed robbery. Number 5. Trevor Jones 34-year-old Trevor Jones of Cobb County, Georgia, broke into a house in Norcross, Georgia, when he saw the woman who lives there head out for a walk. Trevor pulled his silver Ford Taurus into the driveway, left the engine running, and broke in. But while he was inside, he saw a computer and decided to sign into Facebook, right there, mid-burglary. While he was on Facebook, the woman got back from her walk and saw the car in the driveway. She looked inside and saw there was a wallet inside, so she grabbed that, the car keys, and went to a neighbor's house. Trevor's wallet contained both his driver's license and his parole card. He took off running and broke into another house where he signed back into Facebook. It appears he took that chance to deactivate his account. It wasn't hard to identify the burglar, but the harder part was finding him as warrants were issued for his arrest. Number 4. Albert Bailey Albert Bailey forgot the first rule of bank robbery. Tellers only give you money if there's an immediate threat to their safety. He and a 16-year-old accomplice tried to rob the People's United Bank in Bridgeport, Connecticut. But 10 minutes before their heist, 
They called the bank, demanding that $100,000 in large bills be gathered or there would be a bloodbath if the orders were not carried out. The bank quite naturally called police and also initiated a lockdown, but not before the caller's accomplice was already inside. The 16-year-old grabbed only $900 and tried to return to the car with Bailey at the wheel. Both were arrested in the bank's parking lot. The two robbers were charged with first-degree robbery and threatening in the first degree. Bailey was immediately sent back to prison as he was already on probation for robbing a people's bank in Bridgeport in 2003. Number 3. Quinton Thomas Quinton Thomas, 22, was in jail, awaiting trial for murder and armed robbery. Thomas sent a letter to a friend, suggesting him to keep a potential witness from testifying at his trial. He was bold because he knew that the prison staff didn't screen outgoing mail. However, he sent the letter to the wrong address or affixed the wrong postage because it was marked return to sender and sent back to jail, making it incoming mail, which is screened by the staff. The letter was all the prosecutor needed to finish the case. He was convicted on three new counts, one of solicitation to commit murder and two of witness intimidation in addition to the original charges. Number 2. Derek Mosley 22-year-old Derek Mosley from Beaverton, Oregon came up with the brilliant idea to rob a gun store armed with a baseball bat. After entering a gun store, he proceeded to smash the glass case and grab a handgun out of the display. The handgun Derek Mosley grabbed, of course, contained no ammunition and by the time he discovered this, the store manager had him held at gunpoint. The manager successfully ordered him to drop the bat, the unloaded gun he was carrying to steal, and a 9-inch knife in his possession. Upon arrival, the sheriff's department reportedly found Mosley on the floor, still being held at gunpoint by the furious manager. The failed robber was booked on charges of first-degree robbery, first-degree theft, unlawful possession of a firearm, and second-degree criminal mischief. Number 1. Lee Barker In 2013, 19-year-old Lee Barker from North Shields in England stole a bike worth almost $400. He cut away the lock and rode the bike to his house. However, it had been snowing that night and clear footprints and tracks could be seen in the snow. The 16-year-old owner and his father followed these tracks which led them all the way to the thief's address four miles away. Then they called the police. The offender was arrested and the bike was recovered from the address. Barker appeared in North Tynesdale Magistrates Court and pleaded guilty to the theft and was fined a total of 263 pounds, which is about $400. Common sense is apparently hard for some criminals. I hope you enjoyed this video. More funny videos are coming soon, so stay tuned. And please don't forget to hit the like button or share the video with your friends. Also, Check out our previous video. Thanks for watching.